Hello, everybody. In this video, you will learn what is an enum collection, what are the benefits and the features that they have versus an array. And without any further ado, here are the benefits of using enums. They allow you to have an infinite array, to grow your array, just like a list. And they allow you to customize it and to use more objects and classes in a more profound way. So that's basically what an enum collection does. And they are very necessary. If you're thinking about not using them, they're very necessary because in the database queries in C sharp.net, ASP.net core, you will absolutely be using link expressions and link expressions are a step above our enum collections are like the building blocks of links expressions link query expressions so if you guys are going to become masters of c sharp you must learn how to do enum collections and without any more further ado here we go let's uh start making the basic example of what and how does an enum collection work? Okay, so this is a simple array. We're here in our simple console application and this is a simple pizza array. As you can see, this array already has values that I put in. And if I want to iterate through it, I will not have any problems. If I want to use a for each loop, also I will not have any problems. This works like this. I can just run it and it will work. Let's uh, give it a try. Here we are. It looks like magic. It looks like there's a lot going on inside of that. And that's precisely what this video is gonna explain to you. It's gonna tell you how in the world does this work. And so let's, let's dive deep into this. This, this functionality here, the int pizza array is already inheriting from I enumerable and I enumerator. It's already done for you, but Microsoft is abstracting that complexity. So all you have to do is deal with this array. But in principle, enums and enum collections and arrays behave in the same way. The only difference is that enum collections allow you for more further code customization more use of objects and classes and inheritance. And it also allows you to give you more um, access to the functionality that's going on inside of the for each loop. Also the while loop, because they're based on the same principles. So how does an enum work, an enum collection work? Let's go deep into it right now. Let's start making Let's give you another example and lightly scale it up until we have a real enum collection and it will be fast. I promise. Okay, everybody. So we have, we already spoke about the for each loop. And now, and now let's uh, go a little bit deeper and provide a slightly more complicated example. This is the grandfather or the father of the for each loop. As you can see, the for var equals zero. I, as long as I is less than the length, I plus plus 
will be incremented. I will be incremented. So here we declare an I, and here the I will be, we will run if this statement is true, as long as this statement is true, this for each, I'm, I'm going over this because this is exactly what an enum collection does. But like I said, the enum collection allows you to grow your arrays in infinite ways. And it also allows you for more advanced customization of your objects logic, which is very useful. And it, it is also a stepping stone. I am repeating this because it is very important to repeat stuff if you want to learn stuff. Also teaching about it will also help. So here we are. This is exactly how the enum collection works. We declare a variable that's going to be our index that's going to iterate through our array, which is here pizza. And we check as long as that variable, our index, is less than the length of our array, then if it equals true, if this statement here is true, then I plus plus, then we increment and we go through the next step in our array. That's how it works. That's how it increments it. As I am moving my mouse, that's how it works. Okay. so. Let's make this run for a while. I am giving you examples that are simple. And then I am going to give you an even more complicated example to show you exactly how an enum collection works. And this is very important because if you want to query your database, you're gonna have to use this. This is going to be very important to query your database in C Sharp. And as we know, C Sharp is one of the most important and the best languages for high efficiency applications that operate on the cloud and on native on all platforms that are available right now in 2020. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's run this code. It's 12 o'clock. As we can see, the, as we can see, it's working. It's working like we expected it to work. So it's iterating one by one by one. And that's exactly how an enum collection works. Remember, enum collection, despite the complexity that's available in the books right now, if you're reading directly from the, the books of uh, Microsoft, the example is way too complicated. They're not giving you a good example. This is exactly what they should be telling you in the book. For some reason, they are giving you a extremely complicated example, which you were gonna spend a lot of time trying to understand the example and never understand the, the underlying truths and mechanics that are actually happening in an enum collection. And uh, I have the books, I have the latest version. They're very great books, they're awesome books. They're not perfect, nothing in this world is actually perfect if we're being honest. But in that chapter, you will encounter an insanely complicated example, which you will probably fail to understand because you will have to spend too much time understanding that overly complicated example. But here I am simplifying it for you so you don't need to go through that hell. Okay, so. Okay, guys, so in order to test the the example in order to test what I'm telling you right now, that an enum collection is exactly this thing. We're going to dive even deeper. As I said, we're going from very shallow waters and diving deeper, but slowly. So you understand the concepts, giving you simple examples. And I am very thankful to a very good YouTuber that helped me understand this topic. Thank you very much. Angel six. Your YouTube channel has been very useful for making this YouTube video. I am very appreciative of your work. He's got great courses, so go check out his channel too. I am just getting started. So I am building on his work and let's get started, guys. Let's dive a little bit deeper to understand this stuff. Okay, so if we type P, 
pizza array and we hit get enumerator we have to finish this method declaration call so if we go and go to this methods declaration we will see it is inheriting from an interface it is an interface get enumerator comes from an interface so in order to make an enumerator we're going to have to first use the system collections and also we're going to have to implement the i enumerator interface and the i enumerable interface they're both necessary there is a lot of stuff that the index is inheriting from but we are going to focus on i enumerator collections and we're going to focus on i enumerator collections that are generic because the other types are not yet deprecated but they're not very useful so let's go back okay so back here we are and uh let's hit this button let's remove this for a while because we're not going to use it we don't need clutter okay guys so this is how we implement the enum collection so basically a word of advice here is that let's start from from zero and then scale it up as simple as possible to give you guys simple examples and gradually increase the complexity so you truly understand what is happening okay so enumerator here we have the a variable just a variable that's uh, typed by inference which is a basic topic we will not cover that pizza get enumerator because we're talking about more advanced C sharp topics okay guys I did mention enumerators can scale infinitely the thing is that the resources on your computer are not infinite so be careful but for the purpose of illustration we will run it infinitely so you guys can see that so uh how do we use this enum enumerator functionality that's already built in that's microsoft infrastructure right there for us to help us simplify things well let's make a while statement while enumerator dot move next then console right line enumerator dot current okay this returns a bool true if there's another item in the list so if this statement this is just a method that returns a bool value this returns if if it's true if enumerator dot move next returns true if we can move next if there's remember let's remove this we do not we do not want any clutter okay if we move if we can move to the next value because there is a value exactly as we showed in this system in this basic the the father of the for each loop as you guys can see here if there if the length if there's space in the length to move forward this will return true so we will move forward in the array if there is no more space we will not move forward it is very simple this is how this method over here is working it is testing and we will see that further along the video okay so here enumerator dot move next console dot right line enumerator dot current okay how does this work like i said previously if there is another space in the array it will move forward and this method will return a true true statement so the true statement will allow the while loop to continuously move forward and display the value that's inside the array in the field to watch we're going to see how exactly can we make an i enumerator collection an enumerator collection the thing is that we're going to use the interfaces in order to do that 
So here we go. Uh, interfaces. Sorry for that. Here we go. Um, okay, everybody, here we are. This is what we're going to type. We're going to type public class infinite enumerable. And as we can see, we are, we are missing something. And what we're missing is to implement this interface. And we're going to implement it right now. And we implemented the generic part because we need to make this generic in order to use it as an array. And now we're going to implement the methods that are necessary to make this a enumerator collection. So here we go. Okay. Um, we're going to, this class here is where we can define our array. Okay, here's, uh, here's we, where we can define our array of objects. Here's where we can define uh, basically our logic for storing the information in the computer. And here in this methods, we are going to return this array that I just declare here. This is just a simple array, the same as the one that we have up here in the console application. We're just making another class and we're imp we just implemented the I enumerable interface int, uh, generic int interface. Okay. So right now, what we have to do is type this. Here we will keep be returning a object, another class, and we will send to that constructor my data. The same thing will happen down here. It's uh, part of the quirks of this system because that is how Microsoft built it for some weird reason. If you guys want more information about this, let me know. I will try and dig a little bit deeper for that, but for the purpose of using it, it is not very necessary to understand why do we have to send the, the object two times? Because it's basically the same method. Get a numerator, get a numerator. One is private, the other one is public. That's the only difference we can see clearly. Okay, so both return the enumerator. The enumerator class will be the index, the one that's going to iterate through the array, the one that's going to have the methods that we're going to need in order to get the current, get the enumerator, in this case, the enumerator, put it in your mind, guys, is the index of the array, okay? so. Now we will finish this class. This is the end of the infinite enumerable collection. And uh, we're not making it infinite, but we could. So let's uh, remove this in order to make it infinite. So you guys can see the infinite version of this enumerator. So you guys can see it, it, is, it can absolutely be infinite. It can scale up infinitely, which is the feature, the reason why we need to learn this in order to use it in our databases. And uh, to do the link queries for the databases in C Sharp and .NET Core. Okay, so the next uh, class that we need to implement is this class. Okay, here we go. Here is the other class we need to implement. Obviously, we need to implement this interface. And these are the methods that we're going to be working with. 
and uh, it's already a generic I enumerator. Remember, guys, this object will be our index. And this object will be our array. So this class becomes our array and this class becomes our index. So this allows us to customize furthermore our array and our index. So now what do we have to do right now? Simple. What we're going to do is the following. We're going to create an infinite enumerator. I hope my computer doesn't blow up uh, because it's just a Mac Mini Pro. Hopefully it can take the burden because we are recording and the temperature is 55. I would strongly recommend you guys to get one of these software. It is very useful to cool your computer. As you can see, my fan is running very high in order to keep this thing cool and not overheat. <laughs> So without any further ado, this is a free software. Uh, do run your antivirus and check if it's safe for you. But for me, it is safe. It's Mac fan control. And it's not available on the M1 Mac mini yet. But there are other alternatives that do work. If you guys are going to run heavy duty programs and stuff, record video and edit video on your Macs. Okay, guys. So here we are. Um, what do we have to do now in order to make this array work, this level three array, as I like to call it, work? Because level one is a normal array. Level two is a list, a generic list type of array. And level three is the enum collection array because this allows you to do even more customization. You're, you have access to the bare bones class that creates the array from scratch. So you can have way more code and control the move next, which we were talking about in the simpler examples. This is exactly the move next method that the for each loop uses to verify if it can continue to the next uh, value inside the array. And this is how we reset. And this is how we dispose of a value. And here is where we can get the value, the current value of the, the, the box of the array where we're stepping through, the one that we're iterating through, the one that we're, we're selecting in the array by the indexer. So let's make this infinite first and see the example and then let's just make it um, useful because we don't usually need a, an infinite array running unlimitedly it will totally wreck your memory or your computer uh, if left unchecked it will do unhandled exceptions so don't do the those are not good practices guys always check and limit your arrays and your databases and your code okay so here we go guys okay guys so this is what i have to type in order to get the results we're looking for. One sec. Okay. So, well, sorry for that, guys. We leave dispose as is and we go here to public int current. This field we will populate in this manner. This is exactly how we're going to populate this field. We're going to remove this, and this is exactly how we're going to populate this field. Sorry for the error. This is how it's supposed to be. If you want to make an infinite loop, we will go first through the infinite loop so you guys can see it, and then we're going to do the useful thing so you guys can be able to understand. How it, how it works, okay? How it works if you wanna have an infinite loop, which is not something that's very useful. But, it's 12, So you 30. guys can avoid that and not get an infinite loop, okay? So 
here is the move next method in order to make a infinite loop because we want to see what we can't do before we do what we're supposed to do. Okay, let's uncomment this. And this is how we increase the index of the array so we can sort through it. This is where we stop the enumerated collector array if a condition is met. For demonstration purposes, we won't be stopping it. It will grow. Return true. So each time we return a true here, the for each and the while loop will evaluate to true. That means it will give it a green light to continue incrementing and growing this array we are building, this enumerator collection array. That means that we will get an infinite loop. And here we will put the reset because we do need to reset it. Okay, guys. So now let's implement this and see what happens. I'm not sure. Maybe we lost the recording for a second, but let's do a quick recap. Infinite enum enumerator. This is how you set the current. This is the thing that's going to iterate. Oh yes, we absolutely lost a lot of information here for some reason. Sad, but this is life. Okay, going through it again. This is the index. This is our array. Here, we will store the information in this object and here, we have the methods to iterate through the object. I hope we did not lose a lot of information because of this cheap recording video software that I'm using. Um, but hopefully I can recover it. Okay. Um, so basically I'm just getting started. So it's just, such is life. Okay. So public class infinite enumerator. Okay, this is the index. This is the public int current get private set equals zero. Okay. Um, this is the value of the array. This is the value of the array. And um, public void dispose, this is just disposes. And this has to have, has to return current. This is how we set it up. Okay. And we're setting it up to do an infinite loop to test how the array can grow. This method, the dispose method, we're not going to use, we're only going to use the move next. This is how we increase the index of the array so we can sort through it. This is how the while loop increases the index. This is the index. And, um, but in this case, this is, this is the current value and we're increasing the current value because this is it, we're creating an infinite array. And this is the reset because we want to reset this in case it gets out of bounds. Okay, so let's implement this. So quick recap, guys, this is our array. This object here is our array. Here we declare the array. As you guys can see, we implement the I enumerable int interface, and this is our array. And over here is our array. And we can customize this to our suit our needs. And we will be returning the indexer here. This is just the indexer. But this indexer object has the methods to control our array, as you can see. Here we are declaring zero 
to our index. And we're returning it here. And here, because we will be calling this from the, from the for each loop or the while loop, because we want to obtain the value, the current value of our array when we're iterating through it. And here is the move next. This is how we increase, but here we're not increasing the index. We're just increasing the value of the array. We will show you soon how to increase the value of your array. And here we're resetting because it will go out of bounds. And uh, this is a valuable method. It will, and this is for garbage collection. This will dispose of the array when the memory is full. Garbage collection. And this is an automated system in C-sharp, so you guys don't need to deal with this method. So let's continue. Let's implement this. Let's run this and see what happens. Let's uh, run an infinite loop on my Mac mini that's already overheating. <laughs> see what happens. Let's see if it can take it. Okay, let's uh, erase this pizza array because we don't want clutter. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, guys, here we go. We declare a variable infinite enumerable equals new infinite enumerable collection. <laughs> now, what do we do to get this infinite uh, growing array? Here we go. Let's drop this beautiful piece of code right here. <laughs> now we have a for each loop, as you guys can see. The for each loop is not throwing any errors. So let's see what happens when we run this madness. This is just for educational purposes. We're going to see that the difference between an enum collection array and a normal array. A normal array would overflow and get to the limit and throw an unhandled exception. This type of array will grow infinitely. So let's run it and see what happens. <laughs> As you guys can see, it's growing infinitely. Let's uh, here it is. It's still growing infinitely. Those are millions. It will not stop. Okay. So as you can see, it's it's stopped by the system, the operating system. Pause that madness. Okay. So that's how you can infinitely increase your enum collection. So now let's see how can we make this useful and actually make it a normal array, but then we can add the logic that we want and increase it at our will, okay? So let's remove this and let's do that. Let's, let's make this uh, enum collection array more useful. Okay, let's do it. So, okay guys, so the index part object will need to store the values of our array, which are over here, but we will have to pass those values and use them. So we will declare an array empty int array variable so we can use those values. And we will also declare a private int m index variable so we can also use those values. Here it is, private int m index. And uh, this is going to be our index. It's a negative one because we want it to start in zero. And we don't want it to cause an exception. Okay, so <laughs> public infinite enumerator. We will have to create a constructor because we're going to have to receive values in this object, in our index. We're going to have to receive the values. So here we created this infinite enumerator constructor. As you can see, this is just a constructor and it receives an array and it's called values. And here we're just getting that value and storing it here. That's it, not a lot of complexity there. 
Okay, now down here in current, which will be the value of our array, the exact one, where, one second guys. Okay guys, so the current will be set like this. We will receive the value of the index, which we are iterating, the one that we're stepping on. And this is the exact value that we're going to pass to the I enumerator object, which will be returned when we call the, this method here. And um, now we need to pass in the array. Before we pass the array, let's, um, well, let's just pass the array. Okay, there we pass the array in this method inside the array class, infinite enumerable collection. When you read enumerable collection, remember it's just an array, but it gives you way more logical customizations. And this is where we're going to return our return our index. These two methods do the same thing. For some weird quirk, Microsoft made it that way. Hopefully we can make it better by understanding it at least. Okay, so um, infinite enumerator int. This is our enumerator. Um, this will be our index constructor. Index constructor. Okay, and now, so guys, now we're going to change this because this is incrementing the size of our array and we do not want that. What we're going to put here is increment the index so we can iterate through our array. And here in the return, we're going to put a limit because we don't want this to be infinite. So we're going to limit this and put this reasonable and useful because we're going to use a, a useful array, not just some crazy array that looks like it's a hacker's array, right? Okay, index. Um, here we go. And values. Dot length. And this is the end. And this is the way, guys. This is the way. And uh, for a reset, we will not be setting the array value to zero. We will be setting the index value to zero. That's how we reset our array. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, we will close this and we will run it. These are our two array and index objects, but they are innumerable collections and they use the interfaces as we saw previously to convert them into the innumerable collection. So we can use this as a better array that has infinite space in it and it has more customization. We have more customization over the index and we have more customization over the array. We can store more values and do more validation and processing. Okay, so now, this is why this is a level three array, as I like to call it. And level four will be the link expressions, which we will always use to query our database. Okay, here we go. Let's call this and use it, finally. This is the reason why we came to this video, is to understand how to use a enum collection array. Here we declare our enumerator, infinite enumerable. Let's uh, call this infinite enumerable collection. Okay, 
I missed one variable that we have to declare. We have to declare both our index and our array. Array index. Okay. And now how do we iterate through this array? Simple. Here's the code. We use our index and we call the move next method. And as long as the enumerator A has a value in current, it will display till it reaches the end. And uh, let's pass, it already has a value hard coded, so it will work. Let's run it. Okay, guys, so here it is. It's working. Hello world. A is one. A is three. A is five. As you can see, it's working very well. And this is a history, all the weird stuff that we did to get to this point. So that's how we create an enumerator collection. Uh, thank you guys. If you watch this video completely, please like and subscribe to see more videos like this going in depth and with simple examples. Have a great day, guys.